Welcome back everybody. This is part two of Larry's Cuckoo Clock that we're going to fix. This time we're going to get the, besides showing how to get that movement timed a little bit, let's, uh, we're also, we're going to be working on the music box and see why it hangs up. And this has been happening for quite a while, evidently. And that was the main thing they wanted fixed, besides uh, getting it cleaned, oiled, whatever the clock needs. Uh, because they couldn't do it, and they don't want to learn how to do it, so here we go. So when you get ready to set the timing, this here, I moved it so it dropped down, so it's ready to, let's call it cuckoo. And doing that, now I can go ahead and turn this. Don't worry about the flopping of this, because this is normally setting up a little bit, not falling down as far as it is. But you, you can see the Pac-Man is ready to drop that lever. And it should stop there, but it's going just a little bit past. That very well could be good, but realistically I'd like it to fall clear down into its mouth right there. And so you got a choice of grabbing a hold of the Pac-Man and turning it, which is sometimes a little scary and you got to kind of hold on to your gears so they don't move. Or what I do is right here that's what's catching that warning pin and so what you gotta do is first off the gear to back it up is turning this way around this way it's going clockwise and so what I need to do is figure out how far back I want to turn it and right now the pin is at the bottom and that's in in the mouth and so what I'm got to do take this nut off and loosen this nut I'm going to separate it in order to take this gear with the warning pin on look to see what that attaches to it's attaching to this one down here and so what you need to do is pop that gear away from this plate pull it away from this gear here and then give it a half a turn that's uh, counterclockwise I guess we'll say because you're trying to get it closer to this lever here that goes inside there and it's going to be a bit difficult to show on camera doing this because I have it as a close-up I guess we'll say but I could pull this thing back so you can kind of watch me do it And taking this apart like this, you have a good chance of more than likely the fan will fall out or something. You can put them back just as easily and then slowly put the plates back. And this one will probably fall out too. This is what catches the cuckoo bird. So I have it, we'll say, out, not far enough away from that gear. There we go.
And make sure everything's back in its hole. So that's a lot better. I'm happy with that. We got the nuts back on. So I'm happy with that. Now that's that's one of the timings you'll have to deal with. Let's get this leg back on. So your next timing you got to worry about is where the star wheel goes. And we're not going to worry about that at the moment because the star wheel has the screw that you can adjust it with. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this spring back on. Set it over the hole, catch the frame on the back there. Swing this thing around. And you catch it on on the lever there. So the way this thing came apart is you have you have to put the hammer on first or the lift arm the lift arm then the hammer and if you looked at your pictures or did take pictures the longer lift arm for the bellow goes on first the small little rod is the lock to hold this in, this one here is the one that hits the star wheel. Just pop that in, get that little one to go through into the plate, on. Same with this one. Oh, my little leg is in the way. Get into the hole down there. And it's on. Now we can put the hammer on. And it's on. But now, off camera I'm going to do it. But now I need to wrap that spring around. Bring it through the little hole here where we took it out from and then give it a kind of a, a knot. So we got the hammer on. These are on. Let me just move these out of the way for a second. Slide that on there. Cuckoo. Let's spin around so we can get this a little closer, easier to get to that screw. So what you're looking for is a gong. Cuckoo. When that coo goes down, that's where you want it. Snug it up. You don't want it pressing against this plate. There is a little bit of a gap there. Not much, but you, there is one there. And so what, now what we'll do is trigger this. So when that last leg falls down, that's what you're really looking for. So I think that's set for our timing there. Now we can just throw this stuff on here, we'll say. You know, oil that. Uh.
I'm gonna put the nut on that holds the hands on and I'll just use that to spin it with and Here's the half hour. So now we're going to watch for this to drop down into this area here. So it's got quite a nice gap, I'm going to call it. And that just fell, so that means that this here will. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So now we'll bring this a little bit further for the half hour. And for the half hour, this will not drop all the way, just a little drop because of that star wheel underneath all of this two point star wheel. Here's our half hour. Here's our one o'clock. So right now, things look good because I had, let's get a pointer. I had a decent amount of gap in between here. And you don't want too much of a gap, but you want a decent amount of gap in order for it to strike the 12 get this here pointer piece up here by the time it's done and like I say the half hour it clicks down a little bit but not by much and then of course the one o'clock will rest here two o'clock and it doesn't hurt for you to go keep spinning this around and get the cuckoo or act like it's cuckooed around here and count it to make sure you have the right amount of cuckoos in that area. And now we have the two Eclipse, one right there and one right there to put back on. Now we have all the stuff on there. Now's the time to get this rod on that holds the bird. And remember this flat side right here, that peg there, it's gotta be on the inside. And you set that on there. You push those in. You make sure. Make sure you got this on the proper side of that peg there. And you squeeze these back together. Don't get too tight. You need them to be semi loose but you don't want to fall out. So now to try my best to get this spring wrapped around and caught on the frame. So that seems pretty good now. And if I want to now I can put the bird back on. Again, you're not going to force this screw in. You just need to snug it up enough to hold the bird from falling off, we'll say. This is only allowed to go on so far. <laughs> I wasn't thinking, but the wires stop it from going on any further than what it is now this is going to have to be adjusted but as I remember it was up a little bit that looks too far and if it's just a little bit out of whack I can go ahead and bend these wires 
to work for me the way I need them to work. So realistically, I'm ready to set this back in the box now. I didn't do any bushings. There, we do have some slop in here, but like I say, you don't want to do any more than you, is necessary, and it might be better to wait until the next cleaning or oiling to check them out and see, see if, or if it's your clock to see if it's having a problem and that's when you'd probably want to go ahead and bush if it's having a problem so if you made it this far in the video just let you know I've been this is my first clock I've worked on for it, it's been about three months or whatever and that's because my back went out because I'm spending too much time you usually all day working on a clock. I don't know if you were able to see this. That's the actual day it is. And I'm not complaining, I'm just letting you know. Take care of your back. Don't do like I do. <laughs> take breaks when you need to. So anyway, before I put the movement into the clock, I want to wax the box and I also have the crown or topper depends on how you want to call it to repair because their glue job was kind of nasty and thank goodness it kind of fell apart in that area so I can hopefully clean it up re-glue it properly and then use rubber bands as my clamps. So this is the crown Right here is a crack. You can see it opens and closes. To fix it, I need to remove this nail and this one. And that way I can get in there and put this back together again. So you kind of want to do it carefully without balling it up or marring it or whatever. So the nail doesn't go all the way through. And this is a soft wood, so it's easy enough to get to come apart. Sometimes this nail here will pull through. We got the whole thing to come off. It's nice the whole thing came off. Obviously the nail that was here, it's fallen off before evidently, so they lost it. So this way now I can get in here and get some glue in there and because that fell off which is nice is this way once this glue dries and cleaned up or whatever I can wax all the way underneath here and give this a fresh start again. And I'll probably go ahead and take the deer off because that way I can wax underneath. Here you can see the really bad glue job so I'm going to clean some of this stuff up there's a chance either this fell off of the clock and fell on the floor because the reason I'm saying just this part is because the box so far looks like it's in pretty good shape so I'm going to get this stuff cleaned up and get it re-glued I gave this clock a very quick waxing. I normally like to take the frame off and wax under, take the bird and the rabbit off and wax underneath them really well. I didn't do it this time. Get some chains on here and put it back into the box. So it's easier to put the chains on now than it is the once it's in the box I'm gonna go ahead and put the chain on now on one of them and then 
the other one I'll do while it's in the box in case your chain fell off and you want to try to get it back on. Anyway, this here is winding that way and so that's why I need to put the chain on that side. Get it hooked. And then what I'll do is I'll start winding it up and standing it up so the chain doesn't go up inside the movement and get tangled up on those gears. I usually pull this 50-50, meaning this chain is just as long as this chain hanging down so it has even weight. So with just the one chain on, now you can take this part here, put it into the hole, now with the magnetic screwdriver I can catch it, bring it through. One more time. And now we can drop this into the box. And it doesn't hurt to keep these snug, we'll say. Let's try to get the bird in there first. He's got to go so the bellow will flip underneath his tail. Okay, to get this last chain in, you want these chains that are already in brought over and caught up so they're not going to cause slack inside the clock. So now you have the one winder left you put the screwdriver in, see which way it turns. You gotta get it first. So to wind, it's going around this away. So I have to put this chain in first or through that hole. And it's too difficult to show you inside, get the light right and whatnot. And these holes are offset. That's why they have metal thimbles in here. I almost had it. So I doubt you can see it, but right there it's showing me it's on. And what you gotta do is through the other hole, start cranking this wheel, the winder. And bring your clock around again. Got the chain dropping down, almost ready to go through. And there it is. Like I said, it's kind of difficult to show it. I don't know if you can see, but there's metal thimbles down there. And for some odd reason, there's one missing right here. And so I'm going to order one. But for the time being, it's not too bad. It's going to be grinding into the wood is why you need the metal thimbles because of the offset of the chain. 
and why is it offset it's so when your it's so when your chains are hanging down it'll look even when it's hanging on the wall compared to all the chains and weights are all on one side and also when you go to wind it then then you have a better chance of the clock moving on you so now I'm going to push the bird forward or he actually is forward it looks like I need to slide the bird that way just a little bit to get it centered into the door and I'm going to try to hold on to his little wire once I get it through so that way I can get it centered where I want it. So now I have my Bella wires to put on. This here goes to the pendulum. I'm not putting it on right now because it always gets in the way. So as you can see it just has kind of like a catch there and that's all you do is you just catch it onto this wire and you call that good. This here will go into the lift arm and this one should be the bottom lift arm. And the bottom lift arm normally is the longest lift arm. Once you get it caught, hold it up and bend this up. Now that was the longest. This one here is a little bit shorter. Do the same thing, get it caught. Make sure you get around your pendulum wire or whatever that's in the way because none of these are allowed to touch them because you need them to run freely. Now we can set this on there. This has to go through this rod here. You normally can't do it through the bottom because it seems to hang up. It's not meant for it to be done that way. Once you get it on there, now you want to squeeze it shut again. So that's on there. If your clock's hanging crooked now, this here loop that you just put that pendulum wire through, that's the one that you're going to bend by holding on to it slightly one way or the other to until your clock sits level and has a level tick-tock sound. I'm not doing the music, just the cuckoo side. So I didn't sound bad. The these here whistle boxes, you don't want them to lift usually more than halfway because if they're lifting a lot further than that, they are not happy and your clock might stop. Right there is a the crack. You can pretty much see it, but it's not near as bad as what it was. They had some kind of a rubber caulking or something in here. Had to dig it all out and then I had a few spots that had the white color as in no paint or stain in there and so I took the permanent marker and dressed it up just a little bit so the white wouldn't stick out so bad and on this side there's actually a lot of wood missing and what I did is I put super glue in there and then I use the baking soda to fill it in so that way it won't rock back and forth, let's say. And that should make it stronger also.
and there are white parts where the horn is broke off the white does stand out if you wanted to not that you're going to notice it from way up above but if you wanted to you could use a brown or a black marker and get rid of the white points or whatever where the horn's been broken there's enough of this horn on here that it still looks beautiful without having to buy new ones so there's the clock the dark colored one not the colored one and it's ticking just fine the cuckoo works just fine the problem is is the music box when it goes to trigger the music box there are times where it triggers real nice and there's other times where the, it's really the arm going into the music barrel is really stuck and so I'm going to, have to take that back out and see if I can figure out what's going on with that so let me see if it'll do it it's usually when it comes to the 12 o'clock or on the on the 12 of the minute hand see right there it's getting stuck you can listen to it the thing is if this thing just ticks like this and tries to do it on its own this hand's gonna stick there and not move and it'll still keep ticking. I'll wait till that stops. Okay, now listen. So that jerked a little bit and it had a clink. That's because it was stuck and it, it will, the hand will not move any further until that happens. Now, the, it's been triggered, the music. Now for what little they know about this clock, the music hasn't played for quite a while and so the music box has been the main problem with this clock all along besides that the winder was wore out. So this lever here that the movement pushes down on, it acts like it's getting stuck in the barrel here. And on the when it's on the hour, this here actually pushes down, causing this to come and hit this rod here. On the half hour, it doesn't push down it really as much, if at all. But on the when it goes coo coo, the coo part is where it pushes down. Further, at least that's what I've seen and that's what Cox is so see that was a little bit rough coming out which that's nothing compared to what this thing normally does so this old what they call is a ballast of fluorescent light the sheathing for the wire normally is the right size to go over the shaft on the music box. So I'm going to take a big little bit of this. And I'm going to pull the music box again. And here on this lever, right there is supposed to catch the fan. And it's not when this is in the hole. And so what I need to do...
And we got quite a bit on there, which of course I'm going to have to cut that off to size. We won't know until we get it back on here to get that figured out. So as you can see we're out of the hole, it's not able to turn. That there tells me right now it's too long, which we already knew that. So there was still a little bit too long. I might be able to push it on a little bit further. What we're going to do is watch for this to drop in the hole and have this the blue, stop it. It just fell in the hole and it stopped it immediately. And so now, pushing this, it pushes very easily. And it might need to be adjusted a little bit shorter because it's fallen, when it falls in the hole, it stops it maybe a little bit too fast, even though that's kind of what you want. So the other thing I want to show is listen to the tune and make sure the tune is done. See, the tune is not done yet. And you're supposed to be able to just this to let it finish. Draw this out of the way. So that's shown it's finished. Need to move this up a little bit. Now let's try it out again. You can see it stopped. So right there we're still hitting. So I need to nip off just a little bit. But I can't push it right now. I guess I wasn't done yet. So it needs to ride a little bit further. Get all this out of the way. Again, you have to nip off a little bit. And we're not nipping any of the brass off. We're nipping just the plastic, we'll call it tubing.
Finish. So this should be catching the hole here. And of course this is going to be shut off there. But the hole is clear up over here. shut off like it's supposed to and this is hitting the fan this is easy to pop out there that is exactly what you want now if you ended up cutting off too much of the tube now you can slide the tube closer just a little bit to stop the fan where you need it to stop or the governor whatever you want to call it so when this hits in the hole now this should come out very easily so you're not having a problem with it hanging up and doing like I showed before I started working on it here Music finished. We can trigger it again real easily. On the back of the cuckoo clock, right there and right there, this one's sticking out more, which is needed. There's a little nail that was pounded in there, and then they cut it off so it sticks up just a little bit. But that there, as far as so that way it grabs onto the wall so when you wind this clock because of the th 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 th, as it's winding and it has a heavy weight on it it'll cause your clock to start tipping one way or another and then your clock stops because you didn't realize it threw it at a beat so those nails are there for a reason So let's get this thing back in the box. Of course this back here goes to the chain that goes to the people that go around. And right here is the winder that the chain actually for the weight goes onto. Now it operates smoothly when it's time to click in the music. has a nice sound of it dropping the the arm that tells it how many times a cuckoo Another job well done. So I'm very happy this clock is running again. 
and this is a clock that belongs to my brother's friend Larry that he's gone to school with and this has been in the family for a little while and so here we go we got a keepsake going again when it comes to the bushings like I say this is a one day clock it's not necessary yet everything seems to run just fine and so possibly three five maybe even ten years from now that's the time possibly to put the bushings in if it seems to be given a problem but for now it's doing great and come over to my channel here come over to channels and click it we have time for clocks we have mark the one that helped me because sometimes you need a refresher just to talk to someone that worked on clocks because I forget all I forgot all about that little plastic tubing to make it so that the music pops out and just talking with them it finally dawned on me I wasn't looking at that part here we have clock with Seth he's a very good channel his videos are very short if you don't like the long ones but he has some good information there too and of course of course Tor Toshin Torsion Dell he works on your anniversary clocks so anyway if you made it this far I'm glad you made it to the end hope you enjoyed this clock and I'm sure Larry's gonna enjoy it too to see his, how his clock was fixed so until next time God bless and don't forget to subscribe because it's free and until next time I like that.